Hi everybody, so superconductors, fascinating materials that have been around for quite a while actually, probably about a century or so, something like that, but they've been around for a while and they have some exciting and interesting properties like zero resistance to transmission of electricity and the ability to force magnetic fields out of them. Uh, it doesn't take much imagination to see how useful that would be. I mean, you're talking about industries like transportation, distribution of electricity, quantum computing, where it would truly make a massive impact. In fact, one might call it a game changer. <laughs> I absolutely hate that phrase, but sure, it would have a huge, huge impact. There's only one teeny tiny issue, and that is that they only really operate at ridiculously low temperatures, like I think the lowest one is minus 110 degrees centigrade, or with tremendous pressures in the order of thousands of gigapascals. And that's meant that these things have remained little more than a lab curiosity that scientists like to experiment with every now and then. Now, I don't have an issue with that particularly because if you look at Faraday's first motor, well, it was pants. It took quite a lot of development to turn it into the motor we use today, a couple of hundred years. And we're looking at the same kind of issue with things like superconductors because Although they don't really operate outside of lab conditions at the moment, that doesn't mean that they won't. And with research, what's being sought is what's called a room temperature superconductor. Because if you can get it to operate at, say, 10 to 20 degrees centigrade at normal atmospheric pressure, then you've got a material that has potential. LK99 is named after the initials of the two people who worked on it and the year they came up with it, which was 1999. So it's anything but new. It's nearly a quarter of a century old. Now what happened was it was uploaded to a website, Arctivix. It was picked up, became a viral video in China, crossed over in the West, became a viral video here only in the last month. And that's made it really quite popular with lots and lots of interest. Unfortunately for the authors, one of the authors said that it was uploaded without his permission and that the paper contains errors. Nevertheless, it's caused a huge stir of interest, and that's no surprise given its subject matter, and there have been 10 universities who've taken it up to try and replicate it. Six of them are still to report because it's only a few days old, and four of them have already reported. One of them has reported they found absolutely nothing. Another one has reported that they found something, but it was only at super low temperatures. And a couple of others confirming the structure, but also noting that there was no damn magnetism, no superconductivity, and no Meissner effect. There is one Chinese group who say that they've managed to replicate it in tiny samples, but the rest of them are having difficulty synthesizing it, despite it being an easy synthesis. The timing of this is a little unfortunate because Ranga Diaz of Rochester, New York published a paper in 2020 claiming he'd found room temperature superconductivity and unfortunately 2022, just before this paper came out, he had to retract that because it was found that he'd basically made up his results. I mean, his career must be in ruins. So on the whole, it looks like this material is released far too early, despite the authors not wanting it to be released, and it will end up doing more damage than good, particularly to the reputation of the poor guys who are working on it. Now, the positive side is it has opened up a whole new direction of exploration into the possibility of creating a room temperature superconductor, but the chances are that will get lost in the noise. But to set the science aside, you still have to ask yourself, well, what's going on? Because this thing languished in relative obscurity for about 25 years, and suddenly it's the world's hot topic of discussion looks set to ruin the careers of some earnest researchers. So why is it that it is suddenly so popular? Well, I think it says more about us than it does about science. It seems to me that it's almost, I don't know, a desperation about wanting the easy answer, the quick fix solution. And of course, when something comes along that seems to offer that, well, it's popular. Now, personally, I don't believe that. I think we know what the answers are. We just know also that we need to work at them. And that's not a particular popular opinion, but I don't think somebody is going to come along and drop the answer in my lap and go, there you go, mate, 
have a nice rest of your life. I think I've got to put some effort in. Of course, there are always winners in situations like this, and they are the people who are particularly adept at taking advantage of folks' hopes and dreams. And so, apparently, after the release of this news, the stock value of superconducting companies shot up through the roof, and of course, every financial advisor is now going bye 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 bye. And the moral of this story? Well, Nothing's ever what it seems, the devil's in the details, and try and do a little bit of reading before you jump on a bandwagon, because you don't know where that bandwagon is going. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching, and please do remember to like and subscribe.